Welcome to the third installment on the information about um, MANOVA. In this one, we are going to be talking about the different pieces, parts, and steps involved in a MANOVA. So hang on for this part of your CAKE instructions. So what we're looking at today is the Omnibus F test, is um, something that's often called. So this is the test for the MANOVA with more than one dependent variable together. And we're looking at main effects and interactions together, all, right, all of that. All right, so it's pretty much like a journey. Um, and you'll see here we're going to kind of use a journey because you do have to go in a certain order for it all to make sense and work. The first thing that you're going to need in your journey is you need to look at your dependent variables together, something often called the omnibus F test. The most common two omnibus F tests involve Wilkes Lambda or Palau's trace. So essentially when you're running this MANOVA, you're going to get SPSS is actually going to give you multiple options here. It's going to give you at least four, and then you're also going to receive F values and P values and degrees of freedom, and um, so things that are familiar, but Wilkes Lambda and Palau's Trace is new. Wilkes Lambda is the default. It's the most commonly used one when doing man uh, MANOVA. Palau's Trace is often used when your homogeneity of variance covariance matrices assumption is in question. So if boxes M is significant and you have questions about whether that is violated, then you might use Palau's trace. But for the most part, you're going to be reporting Wilkes Lambda as one of your MANOVA uh, results. Mm -hmm. Then going with the Wilkes Lambda, you'll be presenting an F test and a P value. So for each MANOVA you run, you will get a Wilkes Lambda or Palau's trace, one or the other, an F test, P value, and of course you also pre present your degrees of freedom just like anything else in the ANOVA traditions. Okay, now this is where it gets a little complex because that's what you do if you just have one independent variable, but it's quite common when running a MANOVA that you'll have two or more independent variables. So just like in a regular ANOVA that's two-way, you're going to have interaction effects and main effects. So for a MANOVA that has two independent variables, this is what you're looking at. You're going to have first an interaction of your two independent variables on all of your DVs, so whether that's two or three or however many you have. And for that, there'll be a Wilkes Lambda, an F value, a degrees of freedom, and a P for that interaction. Then you'll run another MANOVA essentially, or you'll pull it out of the output, and that will be the main effect of one of your IVs on your DVs with its own Wilkes Lambda F degrees of freedom and p-value. And finally, you'll have the main effect on, of the other independent variable on your dvs together, and it'll have its own Wilkes Lambda F degrees of freedom and p-value. So if you have a two-way MANOVA that you're running, you're actually going to be reporting three sets of MANOVA. Okay. So the three Wilkes Lambdas um, to go with that. If you had three of them, of course, you'd have many more, right? So you'd have a, a three-way, you'd have three two-way interactions. So you've got four interaction effects plus the three main effects. Um, so if you kind of sit and think that through, um, it might be useful um, for you to be able to understand exactly how many just MANOVAs you would have even just for a three-way or three independent variables, three-way interaction. Um, you will find that to be fairly rare in the literature because it does get to be so complex that people tend to move on to uh, more modeling traditions whenever they want to ask questions with that complex of a, of a variable set. Okay. Now we're on to step two. So that was step one, all on its own, but don't forget there's a step two. Step two would be the interactions of main effect F test for each dependent variable separately, right? So step one is putting the dependent variables together. Step two is separating them out and looking at them separately. So I'm gonna just run through them real quick so that you get a sense of an application. Let's say we have that study that I've talked about in a previous video where we look at gender and race and their influence on income and rank in the company. 
Um, so let's say we call income dependent variable one. So what we're going to need to report is gender by race interaction on income, then gender on income, and then separately race on income. Right? So you're going to have three sets of F tests there, three ANOVAs. And then you're going to do another whole three sets on the other dependent variable. Let's say it's rank in the company. Then you're going to have gender by race interaction on rank in the company, gender on rank in the company, and race on rank in the company. This gives you a very detailed look at your data at this point. So it's worth it. It's a lot of, it's a lot of running of uh, ANOVAs, though, um, at this step two. So you're, you're glad for your SPSS at this point. All right, but you're not done yet on this journey, and you do have to follow it in this order. Step three, you want to now look at the follow-ups. If your ANOVAs were significant, you're going to keep going. Now, this is super important. If your ANOVAs in the last step were not significant back here, all right, if any of these were not significant, you would stop, and you would not look at any follow-up analyses. So you need to make sure you pay close attention to that. But if any of these are significant, then you do need to go on down the journey to step three and look at the follow-ups. Right? So this is an example of how that would be done. If you had a significant interaction on one of your DVs, then you would look at the simple effects of the interaction on that DV. So for instance, you might look at black female score for salary, black males, white females, and white males, so those four different mean scores, and you compare them all with each other in simple effects. In my course, the most common way to do that is to look at the um, confidence intervals that SPSS gives you and utilize confidence intervals for decisions as to whether or not those scores are different from each other. But there are other ways to do that as well. Um, now, if you had a main effect of, um, let's say, race on salary, um, so then we need to do a post hoc and we just need to look at black versus white participants on salary. On its own so not looking at gender at all and then if if gender was significant on salary then we would need to look at female versus male all on its own now in this example there's only two categories black and white and male and female this this company restricted it to the only looking at that issue um, so you don't need to do a Bonferroni post hoc test because you only have two groups all you have to do is look at the mean score to see which one's higher because you already know they're significantly different but if you had had three so say for instance we had a company that had black white and Asian um, participants in the study and they had enough people to be able to do that study, then um, you would have three groups and your ANOVA wouldn't tell you which group was um, significant from each other. You'd have to run a post hoc like a Bonferroni post hoc to be able to tell whether all three groups are different from each other or it's just one group different from the other two or what's going on exactly. So you would do that. This is just for dependent variable one, you'll notice. If dependent variable two had been significant in step two for any of these, you would need to repeat that for dependent variable two. So in my example, it was salary was dependent variable one and rank and company was dependent variable two. So you can see that if everything is significant in a MANOVA, you are going to be presenting an enormous amount of data. All right. Because it is such an enormous amount of data, I strongly suggest you take an example of a MANOVA, maybe one you made from one of my previous videos, activities, walk through all of the steps as a MANOVA as a group, um, either with classmates in class or online if you're online, um, and take the information and try to put in order everything that needs to be done. I'm going to show you a little handout um, that is often used. And in my class, and what you do is you take this and you write down all of this on index cards or pieces of paper. You take those things and put them in random order and then you try to put them in the correct order and then double check on my list here. And by doing that you get a good sense of whether you're really capturing what the journey is supposed to be in what order um, that you're supposed to be covering everything. There are nice checklists in your textbooks too usually um, that tell you kind of what order to do things in. But again I think this is a really nice learning exercise for students to be able to make sure they're understanding the big picture in terms of the steps. Thanks for listening. Um, we will be moving on to the next video, which will be on the assumptions found in a MANOVA.